Hey folks, it's time for the TWIP photo critique number 174, dominant color. This is TWIP. Hey, welcome back to another TWIP community photo critique. The topic for this one was dominant color, and we've got lots of images that feature dominant colors in them. Uh, Troy Miller, what do you think? Yeah, are you are you satisfied with the crop that uh, that popped up this time around? Yeah, we've got some we've got some good stuff. We got some interesting interpretations of the work, which, you know, the creative community always has interesting interpretations. So, yeah, I'm ready to dive in. You ready to dive in? All right. Let's I'm see ready. All right, let's do this. Uh, before we do that, anything special happening in your neck of the woods? I, I do have to I do have to criticize you a little bit, Troy Miller, um, because uh -oh, you've, you've negatively, well, maybe it's positively, impacted my life with your recommendation that I get a Oculus Quest, now known as a <laughs> MetaQuest 2 uh, VR headset. And now I'm like completely, you know, literally, metaphysically, and morally kind of invested in that world a little bit now. So it's yeah, crazy. Cool. It's crazy. And some other people, because of you, are getting Oculus Quest headsets for uh, for Christmas. So it's all your fault. Ooh, <laughs> very exciting. I'm just That's saying, so there's, cool. a, there's a pile back there, and in one of those boxes is, uh, is two, <laughs> two Oculus Quests in one of those boxes back there. So Nice. Nice. Yes. Good yeah, job. Good, time. good times. Yeah, it's the future. It's the future. All right, let's dive into this. I want to go. I want to go relatively quick through these, and as we do these critiques going forward, I want to you know speed us up a little bit because a okay. little bird tells me that we're going to have more in the more to critique in the near, very near future, which you know about. So let's uh, let's dive let's in and, and do this one. So I inside the current Twip community. And uh, we are looking at the first one up. It's from Stephen Scharf. He says a tribute, tribute, sorry, to William Eggleston, um, Idaho Falls, Idaho. You and I had to Google this. We looked it up and we learned that. I mean, we we knew it, who William Eggleston was, I think, but we didn't know what the significance was for this particular image. Uh, and you know, I mean, again, considering that the the topic of this critique was dominant color. Clearly, the dominant color here is blue, right? So, we're good. <laughs> good job. Easily Steve. remedied, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Yes. What do you think of this shot? What do you think? So, you know what the topic I, I is. Think... Dominant color, we have this color with this shot. What do you think? Um, I think it's interesting in, in the fact that I have to think a lot about it because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what it is. Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I'm not sure what the photographer is trying to tell me with this image. I'm not sure really about any of it. So what I have to do is I just kind of, I kind of look at it and see, okay, where's the hook? Where's my leading lines? Uh, where's, you know, and I, and I don't see a lot of that stuff happening here. So I really just sort of take it on the basis that, you know, this is an abstract representation of something, you know, could, yeah. could be, could be a train, could be the inside of a of a of a boat, could be like I, I have I have no clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. I, it, without context, we we have no idea. When I first looked at this, I thought this could be either. Well, I saw the bell over here, so I was like, okay, maybe it's a boat that we were sitting below decks on a boat, and we've got these kind of things. I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. So. It's red, so it fits in that, but I don't know, you know, and the caption right. says William Egg Eggleston. So uh, I'm assuming we have to add some level of weight to the image because this is of some significance to William Eggleston. So, but I and, don't, I don't, I don't understand. And I think that with an image like this, like, I think what, what, what might need to happen if your viewers aren't already aware of what it is, is to simplify the image, you know, maybe, maybe do like a nice long, 16 by nine crop with just the the string and the hole over on the left and you know the slats the red boards and just leave it at that like go super abstract um but right now i'm very interested in those switches i'm very interested in the you know the brass thing over mm -hmm. here which i'm guessing is a bell yeah um but i've got two ropes that are leading me out of the frame i got three but the two on the left and right are leading me out of the frame. So yeah, I'm I'm a little distracted with this one. So yeah, yeah. Maybe Stephen will give right. us some clarity you, in that. 
yeah, Stephen, Stephen, so let us know what you're thinking. Um, some behind the shot thinking um and looking at these you know we know there's words on these little placards so i get frustrated trying to see that you know what is that why are they in there and if they're not if they're in there i want to know what they say what are those things for you know so there's a lot of that in this image right right absolutely yep all right next up we've got our friend from below the equator mr craig stamfley says footprint color let's bring this up come on mighty networks there we go. All right. Yeah. I thought this one was really cool. I like I like the fact that, um, you know, it's just this solitary footprint on the beach. And, you know, we get a sense of what that is. Like, we know right away, um, um, you know, what that what that representation is. It reminds me of when I used to do a lot of shoots at the beach. I would always photograph the, the footsteps. Yeah. Yeah, but usually there are more than one footstep. So I was looking at this. I was like, okay, what's going on here? Where did that, <laughs> where did that person vanish to? If we see one footstep, did they levitate and fly yeah. from this point forward? <laughs> like, what's going on? How come they're not leading off into the, the distance there, Craig Stampley? Is that your yeah. foot? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I really, well, so just the, the, the footprint is definitely the subject. I do feel like there's a little bit too much space around the image, but I'm wondering what the heck is making those little sandballs? I know. Like that's I, what's distracting me more than anything else. <laughs> You're hoping those some, are sandballs. <laughs> some critter. Yeah. Or it's like some pellets from some strange bird. Yeah. Um, or some tiny little Australian micro sheep out there. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I really do like the, the concept and the principle. I do wish, though, that the area next to the footprint was clean. Um, I think that that would really, really sort of, uh, allow the footprint itself to come out more. I think that whatever, whatever those little things are, whatever they are, where there's a pile of sand or a piece of seaweed or little mystery sandballs, um, I think it's better that they're, that they wouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, much cleaner around the footprint and, and two footprints. Yes. <laughs> you know, footprint, footprints. Foot, yeah. yeah. I don't know. One of those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, we need one more. We need a matching footprint. You know, if you want to be really interesting, put two left feet up there. Two left. <laughs> <laughs> You're really gonna see. Get rid of the get rid of the little uh, micro sheep pellets and uh, put another left foot up there, and let's see what happens. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Great Very concept cool. though. I, I I do love this. I love the subtlety and and you know the quiet tones of it and stuff. So. Do we, uh, do, does this fit into the, the category or the, the topic, which is dominant color? I mean, not the way that I pictured it. Um, you know, this is the, this whole image is one color, but the color is not the subject. The subject in this is actually the footprint, which is the Correct. lighter tone of the existing color. So eh, loose interpretation, still yeah. a cool shot. It's not a story about color. It's just this, the subject of this is the foot. Right. right. And as you know, in our, our pedestrian interpretation or juvenile interpretation, the pellets are the top. Juvenile interpretation. I love it. Yeah, juvenile so. critiquing crew. That's right. We just start a show. Juvenile critiquing. We just make fun of images and, you know, act like we're teenagers. All right. Craig Stanfley, thank you for submitting that. What is his little, what does his avatar say? You don't have to understand everything. Yes, that is very true. All right. Uh, Armando Brook is up. He says this bird is called uh, Guara, Guara. We find very close to the city of Sao Paulo. All right. Now this one fits into the criterion of dominant color. So yes, no question. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is this is definitely and, and this is that one of my favorites. I, I really love the fact that that no matter how big you make this image, because I like to look at things as a thumbnail and and larger and then zoom in, um, is that this this image is like th it's the color, right? Like right away. And it just so happens to be a really cool bird. Um, so yeah. I get that it it's probably a little overexposed in the reds because our sensors are are sensitive to red so and oversaturated that, um, maybe is it overexposed or oversaturated could be, could be. or maybe yeah, both a little, a little yeah. yeah it could be a little heavily saturated but um great contrast against you know color contrast against that background that green mm -hmm. um you know the the bird in flight like the wings way back i like yeah. it 
I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think the only the only thing I think is when I look at it, it's the the oversaturated the the reds being a little bit too oversaturated. But maybe this was true to life. I don't know what this bird actually looks like in real life. Um, but you know what creeps me? I'm looking at the feet, and those look like they look like like hands. I mean, they look like evil, <laughs> evil, demonic hands right there. Can you imagine those hands? What if you saw yeah. that hand come around the corner, right, and grab the door nope. sill? <laughs> nope. No, no, no. This is where creepy things come from in movies is stuff like that. No. Yes, yes. And look at look at the wings up here. Even these are a little, you know, a little deadly looking. Um, photographically, I'm looking at this, this tree uh, right here. Um, if possible, I'd probably want to remove that because that, that takes away. And because of the way this background is kind of, it's out, it's the bokeh pattern. It, I don't think it would be too hard to remove that surgically. Do you think, you think this would be hard to clone out of there or heal out of there, Troy? Um, I think that if, I think that if it, it would be challenging, um, mm. only because you've got this organic pattern of the the, the the bush back there but it's very doable and and i think that it would really add a lot to this image to take that out yeah um also it's a it's a good lesson in timing like this shot you being aware like oh there's that that branch there or that tree there i should have taken it a little bit a little bit later yeah no 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 for sure or you know maybe clo or copy some pixels from the left side of the screen and paste them over here and then blend it sure. together. You know, it, yeah, it would take some work, but you know, like you said, it can be done. Yeah. And then yeah. our folks and I, and I just square on that up, guy. Yeah. And I just looked this bird up just in general and it's very, very red. So okay. That's, okay. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Very dominant color, which is perfect. That's it. That's it. Okay, cool. All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. All right, moving right along. Thank you, Armando. Good to see you in here again. Yeah, definitely. Karen Sweeney's up next. She says, a little bird told me it was about dominant color this week. Yes. <laughs> a little bird. Look at that little bird. See, now those feet don't look sinister. Those look cute. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> they don't scare you. Is that what you're saying? You <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, maybe if I had shrunk down to, you know, around the size of this bird, it'd be terrifying, but... Yeah, no, they don't scare me. Yeah, and they're not red. So, yeah, no, no. Um, cool shot. You know, it's it's nice and sharp, and I love that. Um, compositionally, it's it's really nice. I think that you know the dominant color in this could definitely be that yellow. What what I would, I'm wondering. I'm kind of just zooming it myself. Is like if we were to zoom into like a three quarter portrait of the mm. bird, um, to where we're just getting just that orange breast color, and you know just the face of the bird. I think it. I think. I, I like it a lot. I think it's really nice that way. And then, of course, then the dominant color becomes that yellow. Yeah. Um, right now, it's really competing with all the green. You know, there's just tons and tons of green in there. What color? What color do you think this breast? Those breast feathers are? Uh, they're uh, they're like an orangish yellow. Okay. Good. I'm sure, there's a proper name for it, a Pantone color, if you will. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, it's actually the color is oh, actually Oprah? called baby diaper orange. That's the color. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was a deep dive right there. That was a deep dive. That was, it. but yeah, you're right. Yeah, if you had, if you know a nice tight portrait crop of this guy, and maybe even saturate the the breast feathers a little more. Um, but but as far as dominant color. I think that's the dominant color that, you know, clearly she was thinking yeah. this is the dominant color of the shot because all of the other colors are shades of green, right? And this is a, a contrasting pop of orange in there. So this one fits for sure. Yeah. And by the way, I looked that up too. And this is uh, o o ochre, O-C-H-R-E. I can't even pronounce the word I, I looked up. That's the color. O okay. Ochre. I will never use that. I can promise you I'll never use that in a sentence. <laughs> it's never, it's, um, but you'll be that scenario, guy. You'll be that guy if you use that in the sentence, the know-it-all guy. It's like, oh, hey, what color now, is that? It's actually ochre. That's The color right. is technically well, ochre. <laughs> these are things I think in my head, but I don't say because I'm not sure I can pronounce it right. And then I'll sound like an idiot. So yeah. I just usually don't say them. Gotcha. Um, 
Gotcha. But to this image, I you know to, to play on the dominant color, uh, Karen, maybe desaturate those greens just a little bit more, you know, to kind of take them out of the equation. That way, the color of the bird and the ochre color of the breast feathers come out even more. So you know, play with that in in the theme of you know choosing a dominant color. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a good way to couch it because if this wasn't a dominant color critique, then the feedback would be a little bit different. True, but just keep in mind that colors compete. And mm -hmm. two equally saturated colors like the yellow or the ochre and the green are competing. Just a hot mm -hmm. just like a hot spot would compete. So, you know, I I would I would suggest that you consider bringing down, you know, non-dominant colors anyway so that your yeah. viewer knows where to look. For sure. For sure. Excellent. All right, Karen Sweeney, thank you for that. Up next is Eric Pronsky. Eric says, sunset clouds near Taos. There wasn't much of a sunset on this evening, but the sun did dramatically manage to light up this one cloud for several minutes. Cool. Oh, cool. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we want to get when, you know, we're waiting at a lake or, you know, some particular spot waiting for the light to change on the clouds, and then usually they don't. But yeah. then here you got this amazing cloud. Yeah, over this nice landscape. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, you know, a little post um, would definitely bring that color out a little bit more, a little, just a tad bit of saturation, bring the blacks down, mm -hmm. you know, and Do increase that drama. Would you keep the, the, the land mass in there or just focus on the clouds? I, I genuinely don't know if what's the, what's the best play here. Or is it like, I would. like this? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I like um, a profile of the, of the ground. You know, I, I find that just straight cloud pictures tend to be a little bit, um, boring for mm -hmm. me. Like I like, I like the idea because if you just crop the ground out, you have no sense of mass anymore and size and scale. And I think having the ground in there, um, gives us a sense of scale and mass, which I think, you know, really honors the clouds better. Yeah. So, but I, I would probably push the, the foreground <clears throat> to more of a silhouette and in doing so bringing the overall exposure down and then increasing the saturation, um, of the of the warm tone not necessarily the blue tones but just the the warm tones yeah um, to, to sort of a it? natural heavy do you see a little bit of a haloing down here on the landmass down at the bottom or is that mighty or is that me you see it uh the other it's hard to say i mean that that there is i do see some compression artifacts um all over the image which could just be you know how it was compressed and unmighty. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. really see anything egregious, but it's it's probably you know the way it was processed or the way the JPEG was compressed or you know mighty does it. You know when we stream things on the web, you get artifacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mighty mighty hammers things like a yeah like a old world you know ironsmith or <laughs> you know, just like hammering it into submission. Yeah, and those those maybe you know not knowing what mighty is mighty it's mighty networks that the these images are uploaded to that we're pulling them from. So, you know any any type of web based forum where you upload images, they tend to compress them on the back end. Almost any, <laughs> almost any, they all do <laughs> to some extent. Uh, there's one that uh, you you'll learn more about soon that that uh, <laughs> doesn't do a lot of compression. <laughs> All right, next up is Mark Charette. Mark says, same color or same color? Yes, I don't know. Does color need to have a U in it? I don't know. What do you think, Troy Miller? Um, uh, I don't think so. I, You know, I'm a minimalist, right? So less is more. You know, if you know what <laughs> it is without an extra letter. <laughs> compression, right? We're talking about compression. <laughs> <laughs> the same idea, Mark right. Charette, can be conveyed with one fewer letters. That's compression right there. Right, yeah. As we insult yeah. half the world, the world for using <laughs> right. a non you know, North American spelling of color. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. We're all friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the same color, same I'm, color. I can't figure that out. I'll just do it in French. Quatre couleurs, la même chose. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I'm saying Didn't that right that. from the comment. I'm, yeah, hey, you put French in there and you're asking an American to speak your French with all these squigglies in there. Look at that. What is that? How do you say that? I don't know. I don't know. Alphabet, Mark. Alphabet. Just say, <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got. All right. Uh, what did he say in here? 
Okay, I can't read all that part. All right, so let's go ahead and yeah. critique this. All right, yeah, dominant very, color, very, dominant color. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's it, it, color is very dominant um, in this image, probably more so than anything else. Um, to the point that even though there's multiple colors, I mean, the color itself, you know, just the overall color is just just really explosive. You could rotate these things any way you want, upside down, and it's really just the color that you're looking at. Um, yeah. I, I, I will say that my brain is very unhappy that we've gone from a lightest tone to a slightly darker, then a very dark tone, and then a little bit lighter tone. I think that the blue and the red on the right need to be flipped. So then it feels like, <laughs> you know, like the, like the scale yeah. of darkness is. So when you look at this, when you look at this as an artist, you hear a bad chord. Like if somebody, yes. if someone hit yeah. a bad chord on a guitar or a piano, yeah. then you're like, oh, you need to hit yeah. these notes instead of. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 That's that's definitely me. I like things. I like things to have a better flow and order. Um, now that might be very intentional uh, to put that there to sort of break that expected flow. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, color is definitely the uh, the subject here, not a single color, but definitely color is our subject. I like it a lot. Very clever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very good. All right, Mark Charette. And up next is Jim Peters, Rocket Fizz. Take a look. All right, clearly our dominant color is red. Yeah, our cyclist has a red jersey on and, and the name of the business is Rocket Fizz. And there's some things on the window in there that are also kind of echo that red. So yeah, I mean, we, we've got a dominant color, but is our subject, what's our subject of this shot? Is it the sign or is it the, the writer? What do you think? Right. And those, those are always challenging questions, right? When we look in an image, like, what am I looking at? I, 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 I see this as two images. I see this as cropping, um, below the rocket fizz sign and then showing the storefront with the writer riding by. And I don't think we need to see the name necessarily, or I also see it being cropped <clears throat> below rocket fizz and up to the top. So the word rocket fizz is at the very, very bottom. Um, I kind of see those two different images in here. So for me, I, I see competing, competing elements. Yeah. You want to crop with rocket fizz at the bottom and then put uh -huh. a lady in a red dress in one of these windows. <laughs> <laughs> matches, the rocket, <laughs> matches the rocket fizz. Yeah, that would do it. That would do it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is one of those situations where, you know, looking at it, being there in person, you might get a sense of experience that doesn't always translate in the photograph. So I think it's a, it's a cool shot, probably with some cropping. Um, it could be more powerful, you know, to, to bring us into a single subject. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And this is, this is more street photography, photojournalistic. So a lot of the rules of, I mean, compositional rules still apply, but with street photography, there's, a, I think, a little bit more leeway in there as to what's acceptable compositionally, right? Yeah, except that that we don't we don't have those limitations on true. our image itself. That's true. That is very true. Not at least in this situation. Yeah. All right, Jim Peters, with your rocket fizz. Thank you. And next up is Nora Zanotnis, Colors of Rust. And look at that spelling of color. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're in trouble. We're being outnumbered with color, the spelling of color. I know. I know. All right. Here I we know. go. That is really cool. It's it's really interesting how everything is is the same tone. Um and I like that. I, I I like the fact that I have no I have no idea what that thing is. I mean, I know it's a pipe with a thing screwed on the end of it, but that's all I can figure out. Um it which, looks like a gear. It's a gear of some sort. No. Or okay, here we're gonna have that conversation about gears versus sprockets again, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's neither. It's like a it's like a grate of some kind, I'm guessing. Um, oh. But it's you know th this is this is very abstract, and uh, I love that. I, I do wish that the top right hand corner was a little bit darker to bring our eyes into the center a little bit more. I feel like the light is kind of drawing me out in the top right because it's brighter. Um, you know, the bottom is darker and the top corners are brighter. So, you know, yeah. some dodging and stuff in there would help, but 
a series of these. I could see, I could shoot this stuff for a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rust is always fun. And what do you, what do you dominant yeah. color wise? This, this is, this feels more on the side of monochromatic than a color that you um, can point at and say that color is the hero. I mean, the overall color is rust orange, right? So right. that's the dominant color. But is that what you were thinking with dominant color? Were you thinking a shot that has an element in it that was non dominant? Um, I, I, you know, I, my intention was, was that the color was the subject more than the subject matter itself. So in, in, in a, in a sense, <clears throat> that's what this is. Like, we don't know what this is. Um, I don't, I can't really identify a subject itself other than the fact that I see this pipe or this tube and this grady looking thing and this one primary color all through. So I think it, I think it fits the theme. Yeah. Very good. And it's orange. It's rust orange. It's, it's rust. rust orange. It's rust orange. Yeah. Very good. All right. Love it. it smells like rust. Smell it. He smelled this bee from Joshua Sommerfeld. He says, I'm impressed we still have bees. We still have bees out in late November. He shot this with his cannon and a bunch of letters and numbers after it. Let's take a look. Wow. Look how sharp that is. That is so yeah. crazy. Yep. And it's tack sharp. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like leaning a... into the display. I know. I am. I trying to look in. for yeah, where that. I'm trying to look for the depth of field break off. I think it's right at the back of his or her wings maybe maybe yeah. halfway through the wings all the way up through to the head that's that's our focus yeah yeah i'm, I'm kind of playing with crop right now i kind of i kind of feel like the left side is too dominant as far as like as how much crop we have and and the yellow i mean th this definitely got a lot of color in it which I, I i love the yellow and it really leans itself lends itself to the bee um mm -hmm. Although the bee gets lost in the yellow, right? Because our eyes are getting overloaded by that bright yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the color, the you know. So what's the topic of this? So if you look at this through the lens of Troy Miller's dominant color criterion, the the color, the idea was that the color was going to be the subject. Is the color the subject of the shot, or is the bee the subject of the shot? Uh, I think the bee is is definitely the subject of the shot. I think color is, is a, is a secondary supporter in this and, and very important, you know, because we know right away that this is a flower, yep. you know? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Nice shot though. Very good, Joshua. Thank you. All right. Look at all those letters and numbers though. 50 millimeter, two, eight, E, X, D, G, O, S, H, S, M, A, P, O, macro. Good grief, man. <laughs> <laughs> it means something to a lot of people, but uh, let's see. I think that was it, right? The bees, the last yep, one. We that did, was it. We did yep. Michael Brown's last week, yeah, or the last the last episode. Um, so, what are you thinking? What do you think? Do you have a favorite out of the out of the crew? I'm you know, you pick it because you this is your topic, so uh, you know best. I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a tiebreaker. I'm gonna need you to break a tie for me because. Oh, um, why are you gonna put it on me? Why? No, <laughs> because I'm torn. Right, I'm torn uh -huh. between Armando's and Mark Charette's. Um, I was pretty certain in the beginning that it was it was Armando's because it was that single vibrant color and the bird. And then as I as I was looking at Mark's, I realized like. I don't know what those things are, but I love the three colors and the colors themselves are so distinct. Um, I'm really torn. I'm, I'm having a hard time uh, between the two. So yeah, I like them both too. Um, I think I'll, I'll solve it. I'll say Armando has to be the winner of this one because he, he we, if there was a plural on your criterion where you said dominant colors, then this one would have taken the, the cake for sure. But you said dominant <laughs> color, singular, right? One color, you know, like one color dominant or the hero of the shot. And I think a lot of them do that. Armando's does that for sure. So yeah, I'm going to break yeah. the tie. Sorry, Mark Charette, I know you're going to kill me. <laughs> but, but this one I think fits a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. I, I love them both. They're both very, very creative, and I, I like them. And Mark, you should definitely uh, print that and hang that in your kitchen. Yeah, upside yeah. down, for sure. Good stuff. Oh, do you you want to print it, or do you want him to rearrange the sequence of those before he? <laughs> 
Can see? <laughs> Do it in Photoshop. Be... Just, just, just don't reshoot <laughs> it. Just move them around. It's done. It's on white. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, it'd so. be really easy. It'd be really easy. So cool. Cool. All right. So that's it for this critique. Our next one, number 175. I think you said a member of the community came up with it. Tell us about what 175 will be about. Uh, yeah, I was chatting with Stephen Scharf and I said, hey, what would you like to do for the next uh, image critique? And he thought window light would be really nice. So window light is our next uh, subject. And when you think of window light, you don't it doesn't have to be a portrait. I mean, of a person like traditional window light, it could be window lighting um, popsicles or birds or, you know, uh, still life or something like that. Or maybe it's just really cool light through the window. I don't know. That's up yeah. to you. Yeah. Like, like the, yeah. Like the patterns that light makes when it shines through a paned window or something. Right. So, yeah. So it can be, it's just the window light itself, just to put a finer point on it, the window light itself doesn't necessarily need to be the subject, though it can be like creating interesting patterns, but you're thinking more of things lit with window light so we can kind of understand that this the the drama of the single diffuse light source coming through a window is yeah. what you use yeah. to create this. Yeah. Okay. But I do like I do like um creative interpretations of you know subject matters, right? Like you've gotta you've gotta break the rules a little bit. So mm -hmm. you know you know our community, right? So someone is gonna come up with <laughs> a shot of a window pane made of styrofoam and say, hey, it's a light window. It's window light. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we get to critique it. Exactly. So. Exactly. Bring it on. You know who you are. They like to do that kind of stuff. All right. Cool. So we'll leave it there. So critique 175 will be window light. We're going to record that the week after next, which will be the 27th of December. You good for that? That's the day after Christmas yeah. or two days after Christmas. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that on the 27th, that kind of lazy week. And that'll be our last critique of 2021. How you feel about oh, that? Wow. The last I, one. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that we've made it this many, right? 175. <laughs> like, That's crazy, isn't it? It is crazy that we, we've been doing this 175 episodes that are published and you can go look at them all you can go look at number one yeah. you know if you want to they're all there in the playlist they're bad YouTube. they're really bad <laughs> they're not bad the first ones were interesting <laughs> they're they're us you know we're all we're, we're all just, rough yeah we're normal we're normal people so the the yeah. the roughness and the unpolish of these episodes is why they're so you know charming i think so hey i love it i love it's it good. i agree yeah, real, real photography. Where do you get real photography talk on the internet that isn't laden with, you know, affiliate offers and sponsorship stuff and this and that and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you haven't heard us sell anything one time in 174 episodes. So, there you go. I don't think. I hope not. I don't think. <laughs> By the way, if you would like to buy now, <laughs> no. All right, folks, we'll leave it right there. Thank you, Troy Miller, for hanging yeah. in there for 175, 174 episodes. And uh, yeah, we're going to, you know, you and I have talked, but we're, we're switching things up in 2022 a little bit. God, it still feels yep. weird to say that, 2022. Um, but we're going to switch things up and make things much more interesting because, uh, yeah, because we feel like it. How That's about that? <laughs> All right, man. You have a good rest of your day. Put on your All put right, on you your go. Oculus Quest and go do some stuff. Or you know what we need to do later? We've been threatening to do, and I've been bailing on it regularly. Right? What What am I thinking? What am Play I thinking? Fallout. Fallout. Yeah. Fallout seventy six. Yes, on the PlayStation, which is sitting right there. All right, do we'll it. do that. All right, man. You have a good rest of your day, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace. This is Twitter.